Welcome back to Tutorial Meet. I have a few quick and easy tricks that will hopefully speed up your time and workflow quite speedily. So let's go ahead and get started. The first one is the simplest one is say if I'm making a box or a circle from the rectangle tool or the ellipse tool respectively. Say if I want to make a perfect square. Let me make a color here. Well how do I make a perfect square without having to come up here and change my width and height? the shift key will make a perfect square so say if I come up here and drag and I hold the shift key down at any time it will automatically lock it into proportion so the width and the length are the same no matter what I can let it go and I can continue as long as I don't let go of my mouse button I have it it will lock in when I hold my shift key down so that's the shift key trick so how do I get say I had this already done and how do I get like a, a circle inside of this square for instance um, so a quick and easy way to do that is to turn on smart guides view and if you don't shortcut smart guides then you need to do that which is control or command U and then with nothing selected it'll tell me when I'm in the center so I get my ellipse tool it'll tell me when I'm in the center and then when I click and drag I'll hold my shift key down to keep it in proportion and then hold my alt key down alt drags from center so remember that you always want to drag from center so alt key drags from center no matter if I keep the shift key down or not and the shift key keeps it in proportion so I can actually make something from a center so I don't have to recenter it I could draw it and then come over here and select both click on it click on the one I want to select to center to and then center it to that if I wanted to but that's just a quick and easy way to save a lot of time another thing that would save a lot of time is the blob tool a lot of people hasn't really appreciate the blob tool like I have because you used to have to draw it and then outline your stroke which was very irritating so the blob tool what it does when you draw especially with the tablet when you draw it makes a feel you see it makes a feel and not a stroke this is what I use 90% of the time that I'm drawing something out and the thing that irritates a lot of people when they're using the tablet is it's not really doesn't really work well with their tablet and the reason why is because they haven't set their preferences for the blob tool so in order to do that if you double click the blob tool as is with many tools if you double click it double click the blob tool you want to make sure the size is set to pressure and the variation is all the way up so you'll grab the variation set it all the way up and now uh, you can also do the angle if you want it if you have it angled a little bit you can set the angle by the the bearing or the tilt that you have the roundness is by the tilt also and you can set a variation for that so when you draw it you have to set those to what you naturally draw with so if it's something you have a different drawing style than I do I imagine or maybe you're left-handed so there's different variations you can have on the preferences and the bracket keys the ones above your inner key make it the brush bigger and smaller so I can make a big brush or I can make a small tiny brush so the next thing I'll cover that's quick and easy is rotate. So say if I had this for instance and I want to rotate, uh, let's say if I want to rotate a hexagon around this object. So I'm going to center it. I'm going to select both of them, click the one I want to center to, and then I'm going to align it so it's vertical, center aligned. Now I want this to rotate evenly all the way around it. What people get in the habit of doing is they'll click their object and then get their rotate tool and click in the center of the next object and then they try to copy this all the way around and you notice it won't ever come out even. So how do you get it exactly even and spaced around? This is for any object, any lettering, any words that you have to rotate around an object. So there's a trick to that. So I'm going to click on my object hold my rotate key which is R and then when it says I'm in the center because I'm using smart guides when it says I'm in the center of the next object I want to rotate around I'm going to hold my alt key down and you'll see a little thing come up next to your cursor looks like a minus sign so I'm going to hold that alt key down and click the center of that object and it's going to say how many times do you want to rotate this around so I want to do 360 degrees which goes all the way around it otherwise it'd be 180 degrees or 45 or however many times you want to go around. I'm going around the whole thing 360 degrees I'm going to divide that by how many objects I want to go, go around it. So I want to go around say if I want to go around 15 times so 360 divided by 15 and make sure you push copy if you push OK it'll move this object that, that far. I want to make a copy 
and then after I make a copy of it, then all I'll do is go hit Command or Control D to do that same transformation over again. And you'll notice it's exactly spaced all the way around it. So if I do Object Transform, Transform again, there's Control D. So that's where I'm getting that from. There's other ways of doing that, but that is the quick and easiest way of doing that. My next one is my blend tool. So say if I have an object, say if I have an object, like I'm doing a fence, and I'm going to select these two objects, and I want to make this a bevel, a slight bevel. So I want a fence here, and I want that fence to go, you know, ten times from here to here, or five times. So what I'm going to do is I need to go to my blend option, so I'm not going to select anything and double click the blend tool. You can also go to object, blend, and blend options, same thing. So I'm going to do specified steps. So I'm going to do five in between here and say, okay, so those are set. I can change those later, but those are set for right now. So I just click on my first object, my last object, and there's five in the middle. So if I want to change that, just double click it again. Say if I want three in the middle, it'll put three in the middle. So a quick and easy way of doing things with the blend tool that makes life worth living on Illustrator. And then all I got to do is put these things here and paste them in the back and then I have a pickup fence. Pretty quick and easy. And then I can change that later. If you want to expand that, say you're getting ready to send it off, you don't want to keep the blend, you have to go to object, expand, and you can expand the object. So now they are editable. Now each one of these are editable and they're not part of the blend any longer. So those are some quick and easy tools that I use every day. I hope you can use them too. Thanks for tuning in. Comment below if you have any questions that I can cover more information on. Thanks.